Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. This is from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. A major announcement is expected to be made Tuesday regarding the future of the NXT UK brand of WWE. As talent, we're informed there is a mandatory conference call tomorrow, but we're not given any indication what for. Given the timing, it could be anything from establishing and emphasizing a new code of conduct to what the future holds for the brand itself. number of NXT UK contracted workers were named in various allegations over the past two weeks as part of the Speaking Out movement. Two of those wrestlers, Travis Banks and Leguero, were released on Friday. Additionally, NXT UK has held no shows in months due to the pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, WWE had been in an expansion mode. Plans for using the UK formula to create NXT outposts all over the world. But with the company's short-term goals focusing on increasing profit margins while taking in less revenue, leading to massive cuts, those expansion plans have been shelled for the time being. I don't know what's going on tomorrow. I have absolutely no idea. It's everything the article says right here. They, they could be announcing that this is the new code of conduct. This is what we expect from people. Part of me... Like, I find it hard to believe that we're calling an all-hands-on-deck conference call to say that there's a code of conduct and you shouldn't do this. I mean, do you need to do a conference call for that? I mean, everybody that was named, for the most part, has been fired. I don't want to sit here and speculate that the brand is going to be shut down, but here's the reality. They have not run a show in a long time, as noted here. The whole point of NXT UK was to cut the legs off of anybody else who was trying to get a foothold going in the UK. Right now, there's like nobody gaining a real foothold in the UK. Do they need NXT UK if that was the goal? We don't know when these travel bans are going to loosen up. We don't know a lot of things. And one thing that, I don't know if it's been reported anywhere, but when WWE started releasing people, about a month ago, however long ago it was. And there were all sorts of names that were released, and they talked about it, and they posted. There were, I don't know the number, but there were a lot of people that were also cut from WWE Developmental that you never heard anything about. They had between 80 and 100 people training there. And if you look at the audience for the shows, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, etc., I mean, there's not 100 people there. And my impression is that's a that's a good percentage of those that are still remaining in developmental. There were massive cuts in developmental that nobody heard about. So do I think it's impossible that NXT UK could be shut down tomorrow? No, I don't think that's impossible at all. But I don't want to sit here and say that for sure because we don't know. But there's a conference call, and we'll find out a lot more tomorrow. You know, if it was possible, and it's not possible, but boy, if it was possible, it would be a lot better for everyone involved to have that thing moved here and have all the TV taped at one time. And people like Tony Storm, I think, being a great example of somebody who was kind of lost in the abyss out there. And I'm sure that there were hardcore uh, fans in North America that watched NXT UK religiously. I'm sure that there were people, you know, in the UK and in Europe that were happy to see some of their favorites like Walter and, and, and the like. And, you know, and I know somebody like Walter is a great example of somebody that won't relocate to the U.S. and somebody that in theory would be was perfect for NXT UK. And I, I guess, you know, we were going to get a little bit more of him maybe on, on regular TV leading into WrestleMania, but then everything went sideways and, we're at the the place that we're at now, and with all the budget cuts that they have made with everything else that's going on, it, right now it doesn't seem to be a feasible operation. Again, you know, you, you want to have something over there. You want to have some sort of presence, some sort of training center, some sort of ops that is more than just having the office in London. You know, times have changed. You need to have, if I, I think if you're WWE or anybody else, a sphere of influence. I think New Japan is the same way. And, you know, they had that kind of deal with Rev Pro. Obviously, WWE being the people that they are, they didn't want to partner with anybody. And even though in theory they did, they just wanted to mow everybody over. And, and once it, you know, lost its usefulness, we've seen this at other times where, 
there's a really good chance tomorrow they're going to call the whole thing off. But as you mentioned, we're just going to have to kind of see what happens because there are plenty of things you could do, including if you are going to have a code of conduct, if you are going to have some sort of statement issued, you know, on behalf of the brand or something like that, I guess you do want all hands on deck to do that. But uh, we'll just have to see what happens. It won't be long after it before we find out what happens.